What is going on guys? Welcome to your 25th HTML5 tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to start talking about how to incorporate JavaScript into our HTML5 document. Now before I even begin I want to mention this. If I'm moving too fast or if I start talking about stuff and you guys don't understand what it is, it's because you probably don't have a full understanding of JavaScript so in order to kind of continue on with these tutorials I highly recommend that you go watch my JavaScript tutorial series it's I think it's like 50 or 60 videos if you go to the newboston.com and look under tutorials for JavaScript watch all of those and then hop back here because I'm gonna be hopping into kind of some intermediate JavaScript topics and you definitely need a solid background so if you watch those tutorials you're gonna be good to go you're gonna be golden so the very first thing I want to do is I want to make an external JavaScript file because we're going to be typing kind of a lot of JavaScript so I don't want to embed it or else it's going to get messy and another thing I ripped out all of those HTML5 tags and also that CSS file declaration so anyways just want to tell you guys this is our starting point no CSS files for now so go ahead and hit new and just go ahead and save this as uh, we'll just save it as bucky.js but I like to use the drop down menu so .js and you can save yours as anything .js and I don't know if you guys forgot this or not but whenever you're working with JavaScript embedded then you usually need those script tags but whenever you have an external JavaScript file then remember not to write those script tags whatsoever and that's because just like CSS whenever you're writing it in its own file it doesn't need any tags so we'll leave that empty for now but what we do want to do is this we need those tags in the HTML file to kind of reference our JavaScript file so I'm gonna go ahead and write script and before I forget I wanna mention this in my old JavaScript tutorials I mentioned that you need that type attribute that says type equals text JavaScript but with HTML5 in a lot of new browsers nowadays the default scripting language is JavaScript so therefore you don't need to explicitly tell it that you're working with JavaScript because it's gonna assume that you're working with JavaScript by default so no type attribute needed just go ahead and write your source attribute which is what is the name of the file that you want to include bucky.javascript so now just go ahead and end a scripting tag to complete both of your scripting tags and now I'm gonna write three things that are gonna help us with this example I'm just gonna make three simple sample paragraphs these are gonna be pretty boring first and yep this is gonna be second and this is gonna be third second and third and now I want to give these each an ID I want to give this one an ID of tuna I want to give this second one an ID of let's say bacon because I'm terribly hungry right now and this third one an ID of tuna so as you notice this first paragraph and this third paragraph both have an ID of tuna and the second paragraph has an ID of bacon so if we just go ahead and save this and refresh it we get one two three paragraphs if we click on them nothing happens they're just plain old dumb paragraphs on our screen so now let's go ahead and add some intelligence to this the first thing I want to do is I want to talk to you guys about a new function called query selector so what I'm gonna be doing is building a couple functions of our own because we're gonna to need to build our own functions in order to test out what I'm gonna be telling you guys in the upcoming tutorial so this very first function the only thing it's gonna do is it's gonna to return to us either one element or a list of elements so I'm just gonna name it get stuff so its job is pretty much this scroll through the document and now this is the method I told you guys about Q U E R Y S E L E C T O R and there are a couple different variations of this method so you definitely want to type it exactly like I have it and now for this parameter what I'm gonna write is tuna now what query selector means is basically this select everything with the ID of tuna so it's gonna select this one and this one now this variation of this method is going to return to you the very first element selected so it's going to say okay I'm going to scroll through your document and as soon as I hit an element with the ID of tuna that's what I'm going to return so in this case it would return this first paragraph so what we're going to say is okay then we can you know just do stuff to it 
So what do we want to do whenever it returns this? We'll just write on click equals talk. And you're saying, okay, what the heck does that mean? This pretty much means whenever we click that paragraph that it returned, call a talk function. And you're saying, what the heck is a talk function? Well, that's actually a function that I'm going to be building right now. Function, spelled that wrong, talk. And all talk is going to do is it's going to be real simple. Just pop up an alert box on the screen that says, I don't know, I could say something, yo, yo, ma, just like that. Now, if we go ahead and run this right now, nothing's going to happen because even though we made this function, this function's job is to scroll through our HTML file and return an item with the ID of tuna. However, we built the function, but we never called it. We never used this function. So it's made, it's ready to go, but we never used it. So we need a point where we can say, okay, as soon as our document is loaded, then the very first thing I want to do is call this function. So a great place to do this is if we hit window on load, and this calls whenever everything in our web page gets loaded. What do you want to do? We want to get stuff just like that. So now let me make sure I have all my semicolons, probably spelled something wrong, but we'll figure it out later on. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh this page and check it out. I'm clicking third, nothing happening. Clicking second, nothing's happening. Now I'm going to go ahead and click first and check this out. As soon as I do, an alert box pops up that says, yo, yo, ma. Hit OK. And now let me explain to you guys, whenever I hit first, why does this alert box called yo, yo, yo ma, or excuse me, yo, yo, ma, pop up? Well, because of this. What we did in our HTML file is we included this JavaScript file. So this pretty much takes everything right here, copies it, and pastes it right in here. So, okay, we understand how that works. Now, what exactly happens? Well, the very first thing that's going to happen is all of our document is going to load all of this stuff right here. So whenever everything is fully loaded, it calls this function right here. What this function says is basically, okay, look through our document and find the very first element with the ID of tuna. So it looks through our document and it says, okay, this is the first element with the ID of tuna, this first paragraph, this one right here. Now, what do you want me to do with that? Well, we just want to say, okay, now whenever you click that element, call the talk function. So it's saying, okay, whenever you click this first paragraph right here, call the talk function. And all this talk function does is pop up an alert box on the screen that says, yo, yo, mom. So therefore, this one didn't work, this one didn't work. Only the first one, when we clicked it, an alert box popped up that said, yo, yo, mom. And there you have it. There is your introductory to JavaScript. I know it, I took it kind of slow this time because, you know, it's been a little ways, or excuse me, it's been, uh, you know, probably a couple months since you typed any JavaScript. But hopefully you understand it. We're back in business, back in the flow. So that's all I have for you guys for this tutorial. I don't know if we're going to be working with JavaScript in the very next tutorial, but we're definitely going to be using it later on whenever we're using the APIs and all these awesome stuff that's built into HTML5. So there you go. There you have it. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to check out my new website. Go to thenewboston.com and it'll pop up. Tell me guys what you think. So yeah, there you go. I'll see you later.